Hi, it's Michelle Howe. I hope you're having a nice Tuesday today. I I lose track of the days. And when you hear this, it might not even be Tuesday. So welcome to my recordings. I like to share a little bit of wisdom all the time. And specifically, I'm talking to the person that is an empath, the person that's sensitive, the person that's curious about what any of this even is. Um, I'm just trying to make the world a better place and you are part of the solution. When each of us steps into our highest potential, meaning we are the best version of who we are, we feel good being who we are, we're manifesting, we're creating, we're attracting all the good stuff. And yep, all the rest of the stuff is still happening all around us. Then we're going in the right direction. We're going in the right direction. Now, Life, though, sometimes has a different plan for us. So I'm a spiritual teacher. I'm a healer. I'm an empath. I step forward today to just educate, awaken, support, lead wherever I'm being guided. So um, what I wanted to talk to you about today is narcissistic relationships healing after something like this comes into your life um, what brought this into your life how to step beyond where you're at um, I've seen close to me some narcissistic relationships and they are always a surprise and a shock to the person that um, gets slammed down and feels devastated and destroyed. Mind you, most people, I should start with the definition of a narcissist, but most people don't even know that they're narcissists. They're just behaving the way they know how to behave. They're behaving with the priorities that they have in life. And usually the priority is me, me, me. What about me, me, me? What are you doing for me, me, me? <laughs> so, um, it's to such an extreme that they look at life as what am I getting from life? They look at it as a real at a relationship as what am I getting from this relationship? It kind of dulls down the amount of love. Any person who is a narcissist doesn't really know how to love for the sake of loving. They only make believe they love or think that they love or feel that they love when they can get something out of it. So, mind you, it's an imperfect world. All of us are imperfect people, all right? Um, if we were perfect, we wouldn't be here. So, you know, to have the idea of unconditional love is a great idea, but in a world where someone's taking out the garbage, someone's working, someone's cooking dinner, someone's cleaning up, the house is a mess, you know, this pressure, that pressure, this other pressure. You really need to be with a person that you support and they support you. And it goes back and forth. And you don't have to be the same person. You could be totally different people. But the bottom line premise of this is that there's a certain amount of respect, a lot of respect. And you're not in this alone trying to fix something, trying to do for something, trying to prove something to somebody else. You're in this together. All right. So I'm not necessarily a pro at relationships, but I've done relationships. I know a couple things. And I know that we have contracts with different people to be with them. When the contract is over, the contract is over. It doesn't mean it's not painful because it typically does. You know, any kind of separation or, or ending of anything is typically going to be painful because energetically you're pulling apart from one another. Your life is now going in different directions. They're no longer the central focus of your hopes, your dreams, your desires. You know, they're no longer feeding you what you might have enjoyed they've pulled back and same thing goes the other way. So it's almost like somebody passing away, but not. I've actually heard someone say to me before who was going through a divorce, I know this is gonna sound kind of sketchy, but he said, 
she left me. It's not like she died. She left me. It's just, it feels like the same thing. It almost would feel better if she didn't on purpose choose this, right? So the idea of losing somebody when it's not your idea, <laughs> when it's your idea, I think you have a little bit more leverage, a little bit more power. It's going to sting. It's going to hurt. It's going to emotionally impact you. So what I would recommend for anyone who's going through this relationship is A, to understand that you attracted the relationship in your life for a reason, whether it's by contract, for a lesson, for um, lessons not in a bad way. We're always learning lessons every day. You know, some are going to hurt more than others, but it's almost like a test. How are you going to react? So when we don't see the handwriting on the wall, when we haven't experienced what a narcissistic relationship is, we bend this way, we bend that way, we allow ourselves to be taken advantage of, we allow for disrespect in our relationships, we give them so much rope that they just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing till at some point, some part of you is so miserable, so beaten down that there was nowhere left to go and this narcissist doesn't feel like they're getting out of you what they need to get anymore, whatever the storyline is in their head. Where you're at is you're in recovery. You're in recovery from that. It's like a brutal attack on your system, on your subtle energies, on your heart, and you have to go into almost a protection mode, a cocoon mode, where you are nurturing yourself. Nurturing yourself. What does that mean, nurturing yourself? That means you give yourself what you need at that point in time. And no, you don't need them. You don't need a pill. Well, you might need a pill to kind of calm you down for a little bit. But what you need is the sun, some beautiful music some walks on the beach. You need some time to be within you to say goodbye to that. Whatever that was. If it's crying, it's crying. Um, if it's writing, journaling, absolutely. Um, I went through something before and it was not fun. It took me years. I hope it doesn't take you years. It took me years. And basically, you know, it's almost like I went through all these phases, you know, when someone dies, you go through all these phases of anger, resentment, grief, despair, whatever it is, right? I went through that and I actually wrote every step of the way through it and it's got to come out of you. Don't ever deny the way that you feel. It will pass because feelings pass. You just have to give them the space. You have to allow them to show up and give them the space to leave. Um, I was going through something recently. I don't know that it's done yet, but I think the bulk of it is. And um, one of the ladies that um, I'm actually working with her, but she's quite an astute empath herself. She said to me, Michelle, when you're ready for this to be done, it will be done. You'll stop. You'll stop turning on the faucet for it. You'll stop turning on the story for it when you're ready. So when you're ready, this will stop. In the meantime, it's not for you to be like, um, this is going to stop right now. I'm not have like, that's just denial. That's not the way that you handle somebody that you love and you are to be in love with yourself. In love with yourself. Even the parts of yourself that you would like to slap around a couple times, right? For doing or saying or thinking or, or falling prey to whatever it is, right? And I always told people because I found my way around certain things and I had this little magic formula that wasn't always like the best thing I came up with, but it worked. Whenever I was in a pickle, 
emotional, not able to think clearly, I would just kind of say, okay, I can't make this decision. It's an important decision. Maybe I won't make it today. Maybe I'll just ask my higher self. I'm going to ask somebody that's not emotional, some part of me that's not emotional. Is this person good for me? Should I, you know, the biggest one is, is this person good for me? Because once I know yes or no, then you know what to do with that. Is this, should I make this phone call? Yes or no? Is this person good for me? You know, every one of us at some point are holding on tight to somebody because we can't let that go, right? This is the love of my life. My life will fall apart. No, your life will not fall apart. You're still there. That you are your life, right? Different people come in and come out, some for a season, some for a day, some for a lifetime, right? But you're going to do something that's not emotional and ask, is this person good for me? Is this person good for me? And you're going to, and you say that, you're going to pause in the middle of all of it. You're going to wait for an answer. You're going to probably get an immediate answer. It may not be the answer you want. And the biggest trick in all of this answering is you say it aloud. When you say it out loud, you can't get stuck in your head, right? It can't get stuck. The answer comes shooting out at you, not really always audibly, but you're going to know the answer. It's going to be like a flash, like a flash. You're going to know. And it may not be what you want to hear. But that is the answer. Okay. So, um, I don't know if I, I don't, I'm not really great at giving step, 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 step. I'm really just good at letting it flow how it needs to come out of my mouth. So once you recognize somebody is not really ideal or good for you, what are you going to do? Back up, back up, back up. <laughs> Each step of the way, back up. The other thing you can do as you start to back up is change the story in your head about that relationship with, the, with that person. And this is a card I drew today for you guys. It says purpose. There is nothing that is coming our way. Mine, yours, your children's, your neighbors, this cut. There's nothing that is coming our way. It's not serving some sort of a purpose. All right. And when you look at life that way, you will stop judging it. In some way, it's serving a purpose. So let everybody do what they need to do. You focus on you and you step into your purpose. What are you here to feel? What are you here to do? What are you here to model for the world? All right. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to learn more about me, visit empathevolution.com. And I hope you have a great day and a great week. Take care.